if you can do it with all the challenges facing you, especially when it's so bad, your breakthrough is not far. Amen. So that's the question for you. So please learn this, okay? We don't do this just in church. You can do this in your house, especially when situations are terrible. Please try this. I have tried this several times. It's the key. Praise the Lord. It's what? The key to your victory. The key that you are in that attitude. You are not, the enemy is expecting you to be that crying, isn't he? He's expecting you. Because he has just played you one hand again. And what is he expecting? For you to keep calling people, crying, moaning, complaining. What is this? Hey, hey, hey. Hmm? Instead, hey, you pop, carry music like this that will make you dance by force. And you dance. Whether you feel like it or not, your miracle is just close by you. That's the attitude. That's the way to overcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. So our Father and our God, we just thank you today. We honor you. Father, what a privilege to dance before you. You're such a good father. Yes, father, it's not difficult to dance before you because if we check our lives, Father, a man of God was preaching today. He said, we didn't pray to break. We didn't pray to eat for our food to digest. It's automatic. Yes, father, some of these things we take automatically. Some people struggle with them. Yes, we were not carried in here. We walked in with our feet. Father God, we are healthy. No matter the challenge in our health, we are not bound, house bound, that we can't come out. Father God, no matter the challenge in our health, we are not restricted to certain diets because we can't even eat any other thing. Some people can only drink this protein shakes and everything because they can't eat solid food. Some people can't swallow. Ordinary food, they can't swallow food. But Father God, look at us here, full of health, vitality. Father, we thank you. It's all because of you. What a wonderful father you are. Father, we are so grateful. We can never stop praising you. Because if we look around us, oh God, or is it our children? Is it everybody connected to us? Because if we're healthy and our children are ill and we're carrying them from one hospital to the other, it's the same as us being ill. Ill. But Father, you have spared us. Daddy, we are grateful to you. We are so grateful. Receive our praise today. And Father, as mothers again, we say thank you. Thank you for all the mothers in the house. You've not allowed us to grieve over our children. We've not had anybody lose their child in this church. Father, you've not had anybody lose. Oh, Father God, you've been so good. Thank you, Father. Blessed be thy name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, as I speak now, I, take, I ask you that you take over Holy Spirit. Amen. Take over my mouth. Amen. Take over my reasoning. Amen. I'm asking that it's all about you right now. None of me. Even the things I didn't plan to speak. Whatever you want your people to hear, let it be what will comfort now. Amen. Holy Spirit, have your way. Amen. Glorify Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, again, uh, I think it's still in line with what we shared last week. What God wants us to talk about today is waiting with a good attitude. Waiting with what? A good attitude. There are two ways of waiting in the Bible. You know, number one, like um, waiting for a miracle, you know, or waiting for a breakthrough. You're trusting God for something and you're waiting on God to, you're waiting for the manifestation. Another waiting could be you're taking an extra step and with fasting, prayer, you know, and trusting God that I know that ordinary, I need to add fasting to it. So that I will get my breakthrough. Or so that at least I will, the mountain of unbelief surrounding that problem will be over. Praise the Lord. So the two areas of waiting, I, I think it's coming out. So, now, the ways of waiting, waiting on God for a miracle. We can wait passively. Okay? We can wait passively. And passively means I have prayed, I have fasted, I'm tired. What will be, will be. You know, sometimes when we pray and pray and pray for a, a situation and you didn't see a change, the enemy can put us in that mindset. Maybe you have hoped for a change and you didn't, you didn't see immediate manifestation. The enemy will make you passive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, but another way of waiting is expectantly. No matter how long it takes, you wake up in the morning, it could be today, another day, another day for my new record. Another day. That's another position. The passive one is a part of resistance after you have engaged everything. Especially when you've done certain things like fast, pray, you know, take serious uh, steps and it hasn't manifested. The tendency 
I think it's yesterday, a sister was sharing how a sister that was about 56, she died. She was, in, during her prayer time, she was like, that, and she knew the story because this lady believed God for a miracle of uh, marriage and then children. And then because she didn't receive it, she stopped going to church. He started with... He started with, I won't pray again. And I'm telling you, these things we are talking about, they are, they are subtle. You, if the enemy knows that he can convince you to do a twist, uh, an 180 degree, he will not do that because you know that you will, it will, you will know exactly what he's doing. What does he do, do to you? It's a subtle move. You will notice that your heart is no longer, it's like, even to pray, if you want to pray and you have that thing telling you, all this your prayer, what is, it, what is happening? And you, are, you listen to that voice. And what does it do? There's coldness in you even towards prayer. Even engaging. You have become passive. And my prayer today is that wherever stage you are in this journey, whatever it is you're believing for, God will deliver you, pull you out of it. Mm -hmm. And you start becoming expectant again. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Expectancy. Expectancy is the key to miracle. In expectancy is that hope. Because hope is expectancy. When you lose hope, that is, you're no longer expectant. Because hope is expectancy. When you hope that it will so happen. But there's also a hope that is a bit dangerous. A hope that is whatever will be, will be. Yeah, whatever, whenever God wants. And then, five years have passed. Six years have passed. And please, brethren, all these things happen to Christians. We remember Zechariah. Zechariah in the Bible. He was waiting for a child. What happened to Zechariah is that he became passive. That's when the angel came calling he said, he, what did he do? Is, is this so possible? He said, show me a sign. It was an unbelief. And the angel now made him down. Now, that same Zechariah, praise the Lord, he could have been expectant. But you tell me, how long is he going to be expectant? Until you see your miracle. There's nothing that God's grace cannot do. Praise the Lord. We have not, the way the Bible chose us people in the Bible, is so that we have examples of people who have done this way for us. Abraham waited for 25 years. He waited, praise the Lord, and each day he was waiting, he was expectant. That's why he was still serving. But good thing, what I want us to do, because one of the things we are going to, show, uh, to discuss is what you do when you are waiting on God. Thank God Zechariah didn't stop serving. That sister I was telling you, she started with, I'm not praying again. And from I'm not praying again, she, she backslid. She wasn't going to church again. Until her problem mounted and mounted and mounted, and she died prematurely. It will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. But know that any step, any backward step that the enemy convinces you to take, it doesn't stop with that one step. If you don't recover from that backward step, it will go further, further down. For Makande Kerena Makasoko Sheke, God is just saying that there are people he has been warning here about certain situations, and you're not correcting it, and you are in your place. God wants you to change today. Praise the Lord. Because what God is trying to say is that it doesn't just stop with that one step. You notice some things in your life. And you notice that it's a backsliding step. Before I used to do this. Before I used to do this. And you are allowing it. What God is saying is that it does not stop there. It will be a backward. It keeps going. Because the part of the world is in a negative position. If you are not moving forward, what are you happening? You are sliding backwards. You are sliding backwards. So I don't know who that is. Please take the voice, receive the voice from God, the instruction from God today, and make amends and come back to where God wants you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, now, so what we're saying is that if we wait, there are certain areas too of waiting. Okay, first of all, let's go to Psalm uh, 62. We'll take some attitude, some attitudes we have to take when we're waiting. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 62. Please put five to eight for me. And uh, uh, by the way, part of the things that God is saying that you know, if before you have a challenge and you pray and it's over, okay? You pray and it's over. Or you you took authority, you know, like some say, the enemy will keep trying. Certain things come into our life. And you just, you know, like, mm, 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 it's not my display. I command you in the name of Jesus and it's over. And suddenly, the things you took captive now are taking you captive. 
Do we understand what God is saying? Then that means there's something wrong. Something is wrong. So you need to retrace your steps quickly. Praise the Lord. You need to go back to the Holy Spirit and say, where have I missed it? If the things we are taking captive before, it's not taking you captive. Do we understand what we are saying? Or even ordinary prayer. Oh, I can't pray. Some people don't know that lack of prayer is an affliction. It's a, an attack from the enemy. Uh, you, you used to pray two hours non-stop. Suddenly your altar is cold. Go back to the Holy Spirit and begin to cry until something changes. Make effort. If you say, oh, today I will pray. Today I will pray. This thing has to stop. And you now start, start, start half of the hour watching television and waiting for the Spirit. You are not serious. But if now, because of what the Holy Spirit is saying, I said, today is today. I don't know where this Spirit is coming. I refuse to allow you in my life. And you begin to, what do you do? You stay with God. You, you sing praises. You do all the things you're doing. The Holy Spirit will have something to help you with. But if you're not where you're supposed to be found, where will he help you with? Do we understand what God is saying? So if you notice some things that are in your life that were not there before, please, please, please retrace your steps. Because the enemy doesn't mean for you to just be where you were. Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. So, we talked about two ways of waiting. And you mentioned Judge Maya this morning. There's something, there's something she wrote that I want to read. It says that belief is not a passive thing. When your heart is full of hope, expecting your problem to be solved at any moment, that is waiting with expectancy. It's not a passive step. You are believing that any day now, your miracle will come. Any day now, it's going, you wake up in the morning. I remember Joyce Mayer saying something. He said, but what if I am waiting and it didn't happen? He said, another opportunity to start the day again. Hoping. Another opportunity to be expectant. Praise the Lord. And if you are in that attitude, she says something. He said, it will not be long. And while you are waiting for the manifestation, you are having a good ride. It's difficult for somebody who is expecting a miracle to be dejected. To be in despair, to be depressed, it's not possible. Praise the Lord. It's in that despair, passive state. What will be, will be. I don't tire for this, too. This is how some people talk to themselves. I'm tired of this. What will you be tired? You, you don't know that God is walking behind the scenes. And when the temptation is strongest to quit, it's because the miracle is actually um, out of the momentum, it's increasing. Because the enemy sees into the spirit, you don't see into the spirit. Because the momentum is increasing, he will try to make you give up before the manifestation. You will not give up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, now, you expect it. And when a woman is pregnant, we all know here, when we are pregnant, you, you don't wait until the last moment. If you have opportunity to buy your baby stuff, are you not buying the baby stuff? You're buying your baby stuff. You're doing things, expecting, waiting. How the inc inconveniences of that pregnancy means nothing to you. I've never seen a woman that said, I beg, go and come and remove this baby because of all the symptoms. It's too much for me. A woman will stay in um, on, um, on a, a hospital um, emergency ward for three months. If they say that's the only way, stay in bed, bed rest for three months, she will do that. Is that not so? That's expectancy. That's expectancy. You don't mind the physical discomfort. You don't mind what the enemy is doing. You are expecting. You are seeing that baby. The baby will move and you say, hey, my baby is coming. Praise the Lord. And what are you doing? That's part of the thing we are talking. As you're expecting. When you're truly expecting, there are certain actions you begin to take. Praise the Lord. So, now, number one, we talked about expecting it to happen. Number two is eagerly waiting for an answer. Praise the Lord. Um, you know that most times when God delays an answer brethren please hear me it's not because he's wicked he's preparing you in that period of waiting it's a period of preparation praise the Lord he's preparing you for that miracle number one character wise number two so that that miracle does not overwhelm there are certain things in God's timing, is different from our timing. There are certain things we are not ready for. In your mind, you say, I'm ready for this. Now is my time. But God knows. Praise the Lord. He knows everything. I keep saying that God sees from, God sees the end from the beginning. He knows what we are ready for. So when we are waiting on God, it's a time of preparation. Let me ask you a question. I don't know if you've waited about God or something. The, one of the miracles of that waiting is that, number one, you, you learn to wait truly on God. Some of us will learn to pray. Praise the Lord. At the beginning of that trouble, you didn't know how to pray. Highest you pray is 30 minutes or whatever. And you go your way. But when certain things come our way, 
One of the things that it changes us, it changes our priorities. It changes the time we spend with God. Because you know and you know that this hearing is my answer. Mm. And because it's changing you, praise the Lord, it's making you stronger. So, do you know that I've seen uh, people that said, even financially, because God schooled them through this, there's a man that lost everything in the stock market. He wasn't perturbed. And they're asking him, are you not, uh, are you not sad? He said, no. They said, why well, I got it, is I'll get it again. He's so confident. You know, when God has prepared you for a miracle, even if anything happens, it will not face you because you know and you know. When you go by faith, it's difficult for the enemy. The enemy can steal it or try to, but because you're already in a better place, do you understand me? You are not like, oh, helpless. No, 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 no. You can stand your ground and say, the enemy, you can't take this. I got it from God. I got this from God. You cannot steal my miracle. Praise the Lord. So, but what I'm trying to say, that period of waiting is a period of preparation. And brethren, it could be today, it could be, for some of us, it could be immigration. For some of us, it could be whatever, whatever, whatever. The end goal with God is not that issue. The end goal with God is your total, your total package of the ministry has called you for. What you learn in that, if you work with God, if you're not standing, sitting down, God will use you for other people in that situation. Do we see? That is because until you win in your private battles, God cannot use you publicly. That's the truth. Until you win in your private battles, God cannot use you publicly. So if you keep failing, God is, you may stay there. And then it's just like somebody that failed his class. What will happen? Retake the lesson. Retake the The Holy Spirit will be there helping you. Helping you. Don't fail again. This is what happened the last time. You did this, you did this. Don't do this again. Uh, let me prepare you. Fast. Wait on me for this amount of time. Wait on me. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Praise the Lord. So, so that's how these things happen. Praise the Lord. In our moment of waiting on God, it's not a wasted time. It's a moment of preparation for the big plan that God has for us. It's a moment of preparation. God is preparing you. God is taking us through stuff. Praise the Lord. She, uh, you know, it says that... Uh, uh, God has, uh, he says, God has, uh, um, he said, the sons of Levi, whom you have, what's the word? You have purged or you have sanctified through fire. Fire sanctifies, fire purifies, praise the Lord. So if whatever it is that we're waiting on God is doing his right work, it's actually supposed to purify us. It's supposed to bring us to a better place with God, praise the Lord. Even ordinary faith, ordinary faith, God did this for me. That same God. Okay, we have this uh, issue. We have, I have this issue with God. And God did it for me. And a situation may not exactly be that same situation. But what will I do? I saw God. You remember David? What did he say? God that delivered me from the paw of the bear. God that delivered me from the paw of the lion and the mouth of the bear will deliver me from this same problem. What has happened? God has used what was happening. What happened in the life, in those private moments of David's life. When he was in the bush, nobody was seeing him. Private battles. Was God, did God not make him ready for the public battle? Public battle with Goliath. If David had failed in the private battle, he would not be allowed to do the public one. Because um, you will ask me, what is David? He said, when they take a sheep, David could have said, what is a sheep? I better take. But no. He's scared for the sheep. He's thinking to his care for the people. If he can care for a sheep, he can care for people. Do we understand? He will run to an animal and endanger his life to save a sheep. That same David, the heart he has, he would rule well. Do you understand what God does? But in those private battles, because he was winning, God was ready now to make him public. So are you on Psalm 62? He said, my soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. My soul. What is my soul going to do? Wait down only upon God. My soul. Wait upon who? Upon God. You are instructing your soul to wait upon God. For your expectation is from where? From Him. My expectation is from God. He said, He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my salvation and my refuge is in God. 
Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart for him. God is a refuge for us. But beginning, he says, my soul, wait upon God. Why? Because he is my refuge and my fortress. He is my everything. In him, I will not be moved. So you can command your soul. He said, my soul, wait upon God. Praise the Lord. So, let's continue. He um, says, um, we're going to check something in Acts 16. Um, in Acts 16, Psalm 103 verse 6. I'm going to read some scriptures on waiting and then we'll go to Acts 16. Psalm 103 verse 6. He said, my soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. You know what I can hear again say? He said, when you are ready to wait forever, then your miracle is not far. When you are ready to wait forever, wait expectantly. Do you understand? Not wait passively. Why? Because part of the temptation of the enemy, part of the pressure for our miracle is time. Is that not so? Time. When will it happen? Oh, my mates are going ahead of me. Oh, my mates are dead. Oh, my time as a woman is passing. Oh, this is... Do is that not so? But now, when you are ready to wait forever, your miracle is very close. What is... When you wake, oh, it doesn't matter. You wake up in the morning, you are thanking God. Oh, my miracle is here. My miracle has come. Father, thank you for my miracle. It's happening today. If it's happening... At the end, oh, it didn't happen. Oh, Father, thank you. Tomorrow, tomorrow is another day. My miracle is around the corner. My miracle is... A, another day to wait for my miracle. Another day for it to come. Do we understand? Praise the Lord. So, now, uh, it says, uh, Psalm 1036, it says, Let Israel, verse 7, Let Israel wait for the Lord. For mercy is found with the Lord. With him is great redemption. Now, Isaiah 25 verse 9 says, It shall be said in that day, Look, this is our God for whom we have waited, that he might save us. Look, this is our God. That will be your testimony. Look, this is our God for whom we have waited. This is our God for whom we have waited. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You know when God has done it, what are you saying? Look, oh, see my testimony. See my miracle. This is our God. I waited upon him and he showed forth for you. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's go to um, 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 Acts chapter, chapter 16, verse 24. You know, that's an example of waiting, how to wait on God. So, um, Acts 16, 24, yes. Who having received such a charge, Trust them to the inner prison and make their feet fast in the stock. Keep going. Go down. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. And the prisoners heard them. You know, the particular issue about this story is that God actually led them to this. God is the one that told Paul, you are going here, Macedonia. God gave him a vision. Come to Macedonia and help us. And in the Macedonia, where did they meet? Trouble. Trouble. What is our attitude sometimes? God, I'm serving you. Hey, hey, why would you allow this to happen to me? Some people will say, ah, I'm going to trust. And my car I'm not pinching. Hey, hey. Huh? Is that the attitude? Do you understand? These people are serving God. Their jailer, their prison is not like today's prison. No? Their feet and hands are stuck inside. And it's inside water. And the dungeon, when they mean it's dungeon, eh? you know where they get uh, the city's poo poo. The city lavatory, eh? It piles there. In case you don't know, go and read about their dungeon. So you are plus your own poo because there's no toilet provided. We is there. Poo is there. Your hands are stuck, are, are tied onto stocks. There's something. I, when I saw the picture, I said, God, the barbaric. If you see where they will put, they will force your feet into two stocks under. Then your hand is tied somewhere. And what did they do? They start singing praises. You know, that's why God asked you that question this morning. When things are not working out, are you ready to dance and sing? Because that's what they did. Did God not show up or not? Are you understanding what we're saying? Did God not show out? God showed out and showed up. Praise the Lord. God showed up for them. Because they were doing the right thing. It's so easy to say, God, it means that he's serving you. Why is this happening to me? Hey, hey, hey. That's a complaining spirit. That's complaining. Or you start thinking in your mind. Why is my case like this? Once you start wondering, you're out of it. Once you start wondering, you know, wondering, hey, hey, you start thinking, you can never defeat the enemy in the thought realm. He's been there how many years before you? The only way to defeat him is either you're praising or you're confessing what God says in that situation. Two things. 
Two things you can do. Praising or confessing the promises of God or thanking God for the promises. You understand? You can convert the promises to prayer. But if you keep your mouth and your thinking, because this is our problem, almost everybody, hey, how come? And then you say, hey, what if this something happens now? You know, it's like this now. What if it gets worse? Why are you thinking such things? What if it, who is putting that thought? Can the Holy Spirit put in your mind, what if it gets worse? Can the Holy Spirit do that? No way. The Holy Spirit will say, when there's a casting down, I will say there's a lifting up. This one will pass. God is your healer. It will not get what. You, from now on, it's getting better. That's the Holy Spirit. That voice that is talking to you, what if you are in a dangerous realm already when you're in that realm? You need to start speaking stuff. Praise the Lord. Speak. Speak. Dance. Do you see this dancing we do? There is no power like dancing. No. This is what is during a little challenge. I know how powerful that just dancing before God can change a situation. Praise the Lord. There is no power. You, you know that even, even if you don't have music, you can dance too before God. You see, God is God. God, you know, hallelujah. It's a, it's a man of God says to be foolish before God. There's nobody that's singing for you and you're doing it in your, in your house. Hey, mighty God. You're doing this. Don't you look foolish to yourself even. You look foolish to yourself. But you're not foolish before God. Do we understand? You are dancing. Hallelujah. Mighty God. You are dancing. Whether you are dancing well or you are not dancing well. You are moving your body. You are taking a hey, hey. You will look foolish. If somebody is looking at you, they say, hey. <laughs> there is a story about, they say that people in other planets, they were looking down on earth. And they say how many how many people are in the football field? How many people play? 11, 11, something like that. He said they saw they saw men, mature men, all of them chasing one thing, one ball. You know, they are chasing this ball. And from there, the players like, what are these people? I didn't know very foolish. Everybody, grown men, 24, chasing ball, chasing one useless ball. That's the way from the I'm talking about perspective. Perspective, did you understand me? Because they don't understand the rules of the game. For them, we are foolish. They're like, what is happening here? That is the alien. But you see, that same way, when we are dancing before God, when you're doing things that do not make sense, according to the word of God, you may look foolish, but you're making divine sense. Do we understand? You are making what? Divine sense. Praise the Lord. You are making divine sense. So, so, Now, the last bit I want to talk about is waiting as a fasting. You know, we talked about waiting now for a miracle, okay? The waiting as a fasting. We are just finished this 50 days fast, okay? And I advised us last week not to stop completely, not to go on a eating spree. Why? Because if you don't maintain at least a week of consecration, when you start again, it will be like starting all over again because you have developed certain discipline. Does it make sense? You've developed certain discipline. So please don't stop. If there's something that is called consecration fast. The reason is because at least it keeps you in that. Remember we're talking about moral uh, excellence this morning. We're talking about virtues. And in that virtue, discipline is linked to your virtue. Praise the Lord. We have to learn to mortify the deeds of the flesh. We have to say no to our flesh, even when it's screaming for us to do certain things. Now, one of the things you notice, I don't know if it's happened to you before. And I used to worry. Why is it so? We waited, I waited by the grace of God. God helped me at least six to six for the first day, 50 days that passed. I know whatever level you are, when we were doing it, you know, it's everything you're carrying. Have you ever noticed that the day the fasting stopped or the day, next day before? If you were do, used to having um, whatever it is, there will be an attack. I don't know about you. It has happened. I've heard about it. Why I'm sharing it is because. When we went for healing on the street yesterday, a woman that we prayed for shared the same experience. After fasting, she has this nightmare. We'll call it nightmare, but it's actually an attack of the enemy. Why would the enemy attack you after such a mountain experience? Remember Jesus. When Jesus was um, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus came down, what did he meet? He met an impossible situation. That impossible situation, his disciples, whom he had been with, for so long, and they've cast out demons before. 
Because there was a time he sent them two by two. So he's everywhere. He's, they've cast out demons before. Suddenly, they met an epileptic demon and they couldn't cast him out. And the man, the man, the father of the child lost hope. The disciples, the apostles lost hope. They was left because he went with three to the Mount of Transfiguration. So when the man came to Jesus, it's like a hopeless case. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. So, what did Jesus see? He saw something that looked like an impossible situation. Or in the mouth when he fasted, what happened? The enemy came to tempt Jesus. Is that not so? At the end of the fast, 40 days, was Jesus tempted or not? He was tempted. What is the secret? What's the whole idea? The enemy, you have made strides in the spirit. The enemy wants to convince you. You know, it's like when you rustle something, when you rustle a feather, when you rustle somebody, what do they do? They react. The enemy is reacting because you have made you have made what your progress in the spirit. If you don't know how the enemy operates, you will think, uh -uh, after I've waited, after I've done this, don't let it face you. The enemy is reacting based on the progress you have made. He wants to convince you, oh, I'm still here, it's a lie. He wants to convince you, I will do this, it's a lie. Do we understand? Sometimes those dreams come with threats. Don't bow to the pressure. Don't bow to what? To the pressure. Or you... You want to spend time waiting on God after you have waited. Suddenly, you are waiting for the dreams. What you got with now will be dreams of the thing. What will I say could be your fear in that situation? Don't mind the enemy. Don't bow to the pressure. Who is saying, why would he send you that dream? It's because he wants, because the enemy works by seduction. He doesn't have any power over you. So the power he has is the one we give him. So if I can convince them that I'm still here, it's not working. What will happen? They will give up on their miracle. You will not give up on your miracle in Jesus' name. Do we understand? Praise the Lord. But what are we saying? Please, waiting on God continues. Hello? Waiting on God continues. You finish one project. If God has answered all your prayers, take mine. Take the, the, the need for freedom house. Praise the Lord. The need for freedom house. One more thing I want to say. If Zechariah wasn't serving, wasn't serving, because when you're waiting, one of the things you do, double your service to God. If Zechariah wasn't serving, where, would he, where did the angel meet Zechariah? In the temple, in the place of service. If Zechariah did like some people, I'm not going to go to church again. Eh, I'm not going to join anything again. Would the angel have met Zechariah? Do we understand? So in your time of waiting, as you're believing God, double up on your service. And don't tell me it's only about here. Your service can be praying for people, praying for missionaries in your corner. Your service can be, take a family close to you and begin to pray for their salvation. Begin to ask the Holy Spirit, how am I going to meet them? How am I going to begin to talk to them? Take up a project, a kingdom project. It's not just about coming to church. Do we understand? Or take up an aspect of the church that we know that they lack. And begin to pray towards it. And begin to ask God, how do I come in here? That's kingdom project. Because what some of the things the enemy does against us is that he brings so much private problems on us that we don't have time to do any kingdom thing. Don't let him be true. Don't let him succeed. Praise the Lord. Take up kingdom project. Be a kingdom citizen. May God help us in Jesus' name. Shall we stand up?